So welcome to anyone who's in the attendees room. This is a meeting of the Amherst Cultural Council. And I want to thank everybody who is here in attendance for all their hard work. And um, Matt and Julianne, I'm going to make Julianne the host. Thank you. And I hope everyone has a great meeting. Keep up the great work. Thanks so much. OK, so I will read the statement to begin with. <clears throat> Pursuant to Chapter 20 of the Acts of 2021, this meeting will be conducted via remote means. Members of the public who wish to access the meeting may also uh, do so in the following manner, which would be um, via Zoom or uh, via the recording afterwards. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time via technological means. In the event that we are unable to do so for reasons of economic hardship and despite best efforts, we will post them on the AmherstMA.gov website um, of an audio or video recording transcript or other comprehensive record of the proceedings as soon as possible after the meeting. Now I'll go ahead and I'll do the roll call. So starting with Cody, who it must be funny, Cody. Can you hear us? Can we hear you? You're muted. Yes, I'm here. Thank you. Leia. I'm here. Thank you. Rachel. Here. Matt. Here. Eleanor. Here. Robin. Here. Excellent. Very good. So glad everyone can make it. Robin's feeling better. I hope your, your play's going well, Eleanor. Um, great. So we are not quite halfway through the initial uh, discussions of the 2023 grant cycle. Um, Rachel, are you up for timekeeping again tonight? Sure. Are we still doing seven minutes just out of That's, fairness or are we gonna... I think out of fairness, we, we are. Um, okay. But to the extent that we can move on, we really do need to push on or we will be adding additional meetings um, past the 14th because uh, we are we are roughly halfway through at this point. So with that, if no one has any other topics, uh, we will go ahead and get started. Okay, I'm ready on time. You're you're what? I said I'm ready to time when you are. <laughs> okay. And I'm just I'm I keep thinking about this. I'm going to apologize up front about reading briskly through the summary of, of each grant. We've all read them. You don't need me to read it to you, but I think we do need to um, try to quickly recap the summary so that we're all on the same page. Um, so let's see. We are starting with I just, sorry, I'm going to have dogs barking here and there. I apologize. Uh, we are starting with Pamela Means, and uh, she is applying for Pamela Means Presents The Power of the Protest Song, Our Shared History and Present Day. It's a musical, March um, 14th, uh, 2023, at the Jones Library. And she is asking for $950 and expects it to serve about 100 people. Um, overall, we rank this as a 2.57. And um, as far as comments, um, one person said uh, it's a large stipend, but 500 is for the um, American Sign Language, I believe. So. Here's the overview. My uh, program is an intergenerational community event titled the Power of the Protest Song, Our Shared History and Present Day Struggles. It's equal parts performance and presentation. It's family friendly. It's a public event um, and will explore the origins and lineages of protest songs and how their significance resonates across time and space. Throughout my presentation, uh, Pamela will elucidate how the music has underpinned and inspired struggles for racial, gender, economic justice, 
and also share her own trajectory as an artist who became committed to using her voice for political change. Uh, they will call the audience in to experience the collective and joyful mobilization through music by interweaving performances of original protest songs and recognizable sing-along covers. Um, so I will start with, is there um, anyone who champions fully funding this? You're trying to unmute? Um, I will. Thank you. Is there anyone else who would like to champion fully funding this? Eleanor. I will also. Mm -hmm. uh, is there anyone who has reservations about fully funding this? Yes, Robin. My only reservation is that similar um, grantees were more looking at 750. So that's my only thing about being a little bit more consistent, but you know, I think it's a great program and and if she is going to have ASL signage, that would be awesome. Yeah. That's um, it's half the budget. Yeah. So I certainly support definitely supporting. So you know, fund funding available, would you fully support fully funding it? Funding available? Probably. Okay. Just, you know, we're not really consistent, but we're not. So yeah, I mean, I think this is important. It's it's um, both both music, but history and and also social justice. So and she's um, great. So oh, that helps too. Um, anyone have it, any further comments? I agree with Robin. What Robin has said. So I have some reservations about fully funding it. Um, but it's you know it's. If we have plenty of money, otherwise I would be in the seven to seven fifty range. Yeah. So just looking at the budget, um, salaries, fees. I guess I guess Pamela's fee here is eight hundred and fifty. There's two hundred dollars for um, uh, sound engineering crew, same person. I think they're doing about two hundred dollars worth of marketing and. Um, they need to do an equipment purchase, which they have a hundred towards that and the interpreter for sign language. So uh, they have applied to many other cultural councils for, for funding. Um, and they said if full funding is not possible, they'd consider lowering, uh, she'd consider lowering her rate, not hiring a crew member and reducing the number of printed materials or refraining from providing uh, the sign language interpreter. So, um, you know, I, I, I think it's fair if we want to look ahead to trying to be realistic to, to bump the number down to, you know, something, something like I'd feel good about covering all of the sign language interpretation and maybe, you know, 200 or 250 towards her stipend or something, but we don't really get to say how it's used in the end. Is, is there anyone that feels strongly about going with a number less than 750 or more or different? Are we all good? Great. Okay, moving to the next. Um, the next one is, I'm getting a strange echo. I think Robin, you might not be muted. Would you mind muting unless you're talking? Oh. Or it could be, yeah, I think it, thank you. Uh, so the next one is Sophie Michaud with the Tiny Glass Tavern concert and singing workshop. It's for January of 2023. It's in Conway and Haydenville. They're asking for $300. Um, collectively, we scored this as a 2.07, so a two. Uh, they expect it to serve about 150 people. Um, so uh, comments about this were that it's in Conway and Haydenville and no mention of Amherst, but it's a reasonable ask. Someone else said that it's very far away. So 
Uh, this is uh, the Tiny Glass Tavern, which was founded by Conway residents Sophie Michaud and Adam Simon, request support for a concert and workshop, Western Mass, January. And um, after testing for the COVID for COVID-19, the ensemble will spend a week in residence in Conway, culminating in a concert in Haydenville. They'll offer mass singing workshop in Conway, exploring choral and early folk music by composers such as Monteverdi and Adam Simon. Um, with their new ensemble, uh, they will uh, have a, a significant following Western Mass and they've performed concert series uh, like Watermelon Wednesday at venues like West Cummington Congregational Church, APE Gallery, Anchor House of Artists, and they're seeking financial assistance for travel expenses, teaching supplies, recording fees, and to pay for four teaching artists. So uh, I'll, I'll add on just right away that they, you know, we can't support travel expenses, but uh, we are a small part of, of their budget. So is there anyone who'd like to champion this particular grant? Is there, yes, Robin. I think we, I'd like to support it in a small, I mean, it's such a small ask, but in 100 or 150, because I think there might be people from here who would go there and just as a, and I think it looks great. It's just, it's in Conway in winter. Yeah, I, I when I look at the numbers about 150, served and that it's in Conway, you know, when I think of how many people will be served, you know, in, in Amherst, it's, there are some concerns about just general public benefit that it will reach our community. It's possible, but um, anyone else have to add? Yeah, I noticed uh, um, they had applied to multiple LCCs um, and I think for the same reasons, for the reasons that you all have cited um, already, I would support like maybe half of what they're asking for, about 150. That seems like, you know, we're providing support um, within the... Yeah, I, I might even be okay with, with 100 considering that it's it's more music, it's more choral music, and it's a small group, and it's out of town. You know, I... I I'm aware that, you know, when folks from Amherst who are doing events in Amherst apply to other um, LCCs, you know, sometimes they don't get anything. Sometimes they do, but you, I think we probably give more regionally than most. I would be okay with 100 as well. Okay, let's, let's go ahead and, and pencil that in. Any other comments? If not, I will move on. Okay. Next one is, um, this is Taylor Mickens, and uh, this is for the Taylor Rose Mickens live and recorded concert, April 29th, 2023 at Drake. They are asking for their entire budget, 1,750, and expect to serve about 500 people. Um, collectively, we scored this at a 2.14, <clears throat> and, um, One of the questions, there were a few questions before I read the description was somebody wanted to know why they were applying to Cambridge and if they had the Drake confirmed. Um, someone else said it's free and at the Drake makes this location available to community that might not be able to attend other events, uh, but it is a rather large ask. So description, um, the grantee and their colleagues are planning to have a live concert and it will be professionally recorded um, and it will have their their band's new original indie folk and jazz music as part of um, our music tour across Massachusetts. The concert get the Drake. Um, the pandemic still makes it impossible for some to be able to see live music in person. Um, this will allow people to experience music for free, both live and from the comfort of their homes. We want to make a quality musical experience accessible to anyone to enjoy without making people feel like they have to choose between safety um, 
and music experience and it will be an opportunity for um, the band to perform in, in, in our community in Western Massachusetts after a long pause because of the pandemic. Um, and it will make space for people to experience new and exciting music for free. Um, I'm going to lead with, with this one in that um, I, I think it's great that they're having it recorded, but I'm kind of curious as to what they're going to do with their recording thereafter. Is this something that would get turned into some sort of a an album that they sell and promote elsewhere and that's that's an actual economic opportunity. Um, I just kind of kind of wonder what exactly we would be funding and um, to the one person's point, I guess we really do need to know if the, the Drake is secured so uh, is there anyone who would like to to champion this particular grant. I have a feeling that Eleanor has some questions. I just am not ready to champion. And I think you have, there are some very valid questions <laughs> raised more so. Yeah, so just hopping into the budget, you know, it's 550 to pay the band. There's 200 in social media advertisement and flyers. Uh, supplies and materials, $100 for merchandise production. That one, I don't know what merchandise production is, but it sounds like maybe packaging this in, up into something. And another 100 for photography and promotion, and then 800 for the video and audio recording. It, it's, it strikes me a bit as, you know, this is a, a band producing promotional materials. Um, I'm opening up the, the letter that was in here. Sorry, you're in and out, Cody. You're, you're, the internet's breaking up. I just feel, I just feel sad. Oh, what's the bad news? I'm sorry, Cody, we, we're not getting your audio. The internet is breaking it up. Is everyone else having a problem? Okay, it's not my internet. Um, <clears throat> so we don't have chat turned on because of a situation we had happen that in the past but if if you want to email me real quick then i i can read what you're saying um and i i'm looking at the letter that's provided here <clears throat> and it's a letter from the applicant saying um they're working on getting documentation for the live and recorded concert at the drake when we get documentation confirming our date for our tour show, we will send it to the Cultural Council as soon as possible. So um, I don't recall receiving anything. Matt, if you're able to. No, uh, we don't. We don't never got anything from them. I, I was looking out for that. I, um, I think this is a, I have no problems with this other than the venue not being confirmed and um, I, you know, I was the one who asked about the Cambridge question as well. So those two things both give me pause, especially with the direct grant model. Yeah, and we don't have, I don't think there's a letter of support from the Drake. So we don't, we don't have a date. We don't have them saying, you know, that the, they're giving right. the space in kind and they're asking for the full budget. And they're also trying to have a $20 suggested donation. Um, wait, let me make sure I'm in the right grant, sorry. Let me go back. They kind of run together at a certain point. Yeah. Sorry, and, and Cody, we you going to send me your comment? You're a little frozen there. Um, We're running out of time. Yep. Yeah. 
in in the interest of time, is there is there anyone who I, I think it doesn't meet our guidelines, sadly. Um, is is there anyone else who also was in that? Um, I was I was in that chat. Yeah. It says the cost is zero. They're but they don't have a date and they don't have a letter of confirmation. They have a from the Drake specific date, but we don't know that that's confirmed. Mm -hmm. um, so it is unclear exactly what they're asking for. Yeah, so the, the date and the direct granting model, as Matt was saying, and then further, you know, is this really for the benefit of Amherst? I mean, I think Amherst residents, should it happen, would benefit uh, certainly, but or, or is it really creating promotional materials uh, to launch a band or promote them? So uh, unless someone feels strongly, I'm going to put this at zero for now, but we should we should come come back to to it. Is there anyone who feels strongly about putting more than that down? OK. Um, moving on, thank you. Uh, the next, I'm getting that strange echo again. I'm not sure who that's coming from. Thank you. Um, so the the next one is <clears throat> uh, Mohawk Mohawk Trail Concerts Summer Festival 2023. It happens between June 17th and July 22nd, 2023. Uh, and it will be in Montague, Shelburne Falls, and Charlemont. They're asking for $500 and expect to serve uh, about 750 people. Overall, our rating for this was a 1.5. And um, one person said, you know, it's a good program, but it's more chamber music. Another person said uh, local public benefit, questioning that. Uh, another person said location and someone said far away. So I think the the issue here is, is you know, certainly um, will folks from Amherst uh, participate and also that it is more classical music. So uh, there will be nine concerts of chamber music in three different venues. Um, and I think that's it. Let me make sure there's nothing more here. Yep, it's really quite a, a brief summary. So just nine chamber music concerts. So is there anyone who'd like to champion this grant? Julianne? Yes. Um, so I was, I was, I think the one who said more, cha more chamber music. Um, but I, I want to just make one comment about the, the distance and the location. Um, you know, we did explicitly update our, revise our guidelines this year to encourage regional efforts. Um, and I'm not saying that this is, the slam dunk grant of the year in terms of that. But I do think that um, I'm reluctant to zero out grants that are not super, super close to us if it's benefiting the larger Valley, um, Western Mass area and, and accessible to Amherst residents um, and particularly folks who apply for multiple cultural councils. So I'm, I'm in favor of funding this on the low end, but I, I, wouldn't, um, I wouldn't deny it based on public benefit just because of our regional emphasis. And I'm kind of making that point relative to some of the other grants that um, we've seen and we'll see as well, just just to bear that in mind. Yeah, and um, I, I, I fully agree. And I, I actually think that especially in the summer, people do like to get out of Amherst and go up to, you know, Charlemagne or Montague and some of these other places. Uh, so as far as I'm looking for their, um, what they're saying as far as public benefit. So they are mentioning they're well publicized to the local community. It's live music, um, connecting people. I wish they had said something specific to people from Amherst. Um, they do note that uh, some of the musicians, uh, one's a retired professor from, from UMass, um, another is concert master of the Springfield Symphony Orchestra. So um, yeah, I, I think this really probably comes down to, you know, something in support, but something that also reflects, we have a lot of music and, um, 
the number of uh, Amherst based people that would likely participate. Any other comments? Um, in yes. Um, I still cut it out. Um, yes, but it seems to be a little better. Yeah, I would not. Uh, you're cutting out, Cody. I'm so sorry. Uh, we're not. Uh, we're not getting the message. Uh, I'm sorry. We need to figure this out. Yes, Robin. You're muted. I was just scratching. Oh, okay. Um, I do think that this is a program that is worth supporting. Okay. Are, are we, it's, they're asking for 500, so are we talking about like 100, 150, 200, 250, what are we in the neighborhood of? I think um, at least half, half, well, 250, 300, at least just to show our support for this valley-wide program that's been going on for a long time and is you know, an excellent program. I think, sure. um, I think I would have said 200, but I am amenable to. I mean, I, I think the 200 is probably more realistic just because in the back of our minds, I think we're all pretty clear that we're going to have to come back and, and adjust for music and, and, and classical music in particular. Um, so we can, I mean, they're not final, so it could be bumped up or down. So I'm going to put 200 and that, that's a, a, a nice amount of support. And another thing is they are recommending $20 um, is the recommended donation. So, you know, they, they have the opportunity to have this for free, but also to, to bring in quite a bit of funding. Any other comments? How are we doing for time, Rachel? On this one, we have 50 seconds left. All right, okay. So next, Jason Montgomery, this is applying for the ABP Text Poem Project 2023. It's an ongoing project, so it has no date. It's both virtual and occurring at 50 Arrow Gallery. And uh, they're requesting the full budget from us, $1,200 and expected to serve 1,000 people. Uh, collectively, uh, we scored this uh, pretty low, 1.6. Uh, so comments here um, were, before I get into it, $1,200 budget is divided by, by four area councils, so maybe 300. Another person said uh, poetry on demand, or is this a commercial venture? Uh, someone else said it's a novel and modern approach to poetry, but I'm confused at the same time. Someone else said it's happening in East Hampton. So these are East Hampton, this is East Hampton poet uh, laureate Jason R. Montgomery, along with um, Alex Woolner, also poet laureate, and they are entering the final months uh, in this role as laureates ending in April and in recognition of this work are planning both an event at 50 Arrow Gallery to recognize this change with a chapbook publication of pieces from the Textbook Project. This will um, it generate continued support from Attack Bear Press Poetry projects and going forward and beyond at the end date the Poet Laureates Program, uh, but most specifically the Text Poem Project. The text poem project was started as part of East Hampton's City Art Poets Laureate program in which you can request an original poem via text try it there's a number I don't know if anybody's gone and done this i'll have to do this tonight to receive an original poem and they've received a high number of requests for original poems since its inception so 
before we get into this, I'm it's a little little confusing as far as specifically. I want to look at the the budgeting and what exactly they're asking to budget. So it's five hundred for the chat books, two hundred dollars stipend to an artist, three hundred for admin costs, and two hundred. Uh, to cover uh, defray a portion of phone costs. So, um, is there anyone who would like to to champion this grant? Um, I don't. I guess I don't want to champion it in full, but I really love it. I think it's a really unique um, idea. I yeah. I, I don't know. I don't think I would pay that full amount there. Um, but I just would definitely encourage us to support it. Yeah, I'm I'm a little confused why they didn't focus on on the event and give us the date for the event because that would kind of make this a little bit clearer myself. We don't get a lot of poetry events or grant applications though. Um yeah. Uh, what would I do you now? You. You would try to do a small, a small amount or the full amount. I would definitely do partial. Partial. Yeah. Yeah. Julian, I'm sorry, I dropped I dropped out for a minute. I was the one who commented about sort of if they apply to the four area councils that it would make sense for us to um, fund them at, at a fourth of the uh, of the ask. And, mm -hmm. I, and I'm sorry, I apologize if I missed that part of the conversation, but that's my suggestion. That that seems sensible to me, certainly. Um, is is there anyone who feels quite differently than that? I mean, it it, it is in the area, you know, but um, and it's a large ongoing. Do do we feel that we have enough? I mean, it's ongoing without having a, a date. I guess it's also virtual. I'm going to go with I, I, I think we have enough since it's ongoing and it's already happened. So we're all, are you muted, Eleanor? Sorry, no, just nodding. <laughs> okay. So everyone's pretty comfortable with 300 if, if we end up having the funding for that? Okay, thank you. Okay, so the next grant is Marilyn Morales. And this is always remember showcase from the world premiere. It's opera slash musical, and it's scheduled to happen. Um, sometime between March 1st and December 31st of next year. It would be a virtual event and on local cable. Um, she's asking for $850 to serve 1000 people. And according to our compiled numbers, uh, this was this was less than one. So um, questions on this one uh one one person said we declined this last year uh i i recall declining it last year uh so not a whole lot of comments but clearly it, it wasn't strongly supported when we scored it so the art artist is saying they won't be able to reach as many communities they wish they could with live performances there's an echo if everyone could check about muting they, they would like to offer a stunning virtual showcase to your community this season. Um, so I guess rather than, than read through all of this, basically this is an artist who'd like to coordinate doing a broadcast with our local cable station and make it available to our community and that it would take place uh, up to one year after the first show in 2023. They've had positive results from similar presentations in 2021 and 2022. Um, the artist um, 
Marilyn Morales libretto music and the orchestrations by Kirk Whipple. Um, they've premiered to audiences in Miami in November, and they want to show this stage, show this on stages in Massachusetts when they can gain commitments and support. Meanwhile, they're doing video with selections from the premiere, including artist interviews. Um, all will license this entertaining and educational show for broadcast only to participating communities. So it sounds to me like this is either in the works or mostly made, but they're just trying to have us pay, pay them if we wanted to come to, I guess, Amherst Media. So um, like the one person said, we did decline this last year um, as opposed to championing this, I'm going to suggest that we decline it again. Is there anyone who would like to, to speak to taking a different approach? I would not, but I, I did want to give context for the newer members that we do every year, it seems like have a handful of <clears throat> applicants who um, basically just sort of make a pitch to do their performance or their art at as many communities as they have time to make the application into. And it's, I just, you know, I want to say that these are probably pretty decent performances and, and, you know, these people come in with good credentials and we tend to decline, I don't want to say outright, but, but more, more often than not, we decline just because we're not really supporting local artists, local cultural um, institutions, local folks. But that being said, you know, I could imagine a year when we thought, geez, we've got, you know, 19 chamber orchestra pieces and no poetry. And somebody, some national poet came through with something and we said, yeah, that, you know, our community could benefit from that. I do not think that's, that's the case here, but it isn't, it's just an interesting sort of, um, I don't know, situation for us to be considering. But I, I'm with you, Julian. I, I also think that this is not something that we um, need to prioritize or fund this year. Yeah, th thank you for your, for your context there. I mean, it kind of comes across as like a, a pay to play type thing and, you know, um, like you said, it could be really great, but um, I think we're we're really trying to do a lot more in person. And you know, when when they want to, you know, come to Amherst and whatnot, be more compelling. So, are we all in agreement that this does not meet make enough public benefit for Amherst? Yeah, thank you. Okay, so next we have um, Multi Arts Inc. And their event is the, Mon the Monarch Butterfly Art and Workshop, Art Workshop and Exhibitions. Uh, it's visual art. It would be in April at both Amherst High School and Amherst College. They're asking for $850 to serve about 500 people. And our overall scoring of this was 2.57. So pretty, pretty solid score. Um, <clears throat> There was a question in the budget about designating funds for supplies, which I believe that is permitted. And someone else said something about, well, there's a suggested donation. So this is specifically uh, for children ages four to 12 uh, to have them do workshops to create artwork inspired by the monarch butterfly. And the artwork from the workshops will be on exhibition during the concert by the Valley Winds Ensemble at their April concert at Amherst College and in Hadley um, at the US Fish and Wildlife Department Services building during uh, the month of May. So um, with that, I will turn it over to if there's someone who'd like to champion this grant. Was this connected to another grant this year? It, it is. It, it provides right. artwork um, to be viewed during the Valley Winds Ensemble. Right, 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 right. And that'll but be these at are, College. But these would be separate. They're separate grants, yeah. Um, okay. And we can consider them separately. And But it brings, a, I think it's, it's nice in that it brings a visual art component to a musical comfort, com, concert and extends the audience who gets to see uh, the artwork that's created that's both science and art. So I think it, you know, from a community benefit point of view, the way they're setting this up is pretty smart. <clears throat> I would champion this. I really like it. Yeah. Robin. Um, I think I've lost Cody. It's also 
you know, art that they're participating in. Robin, did you have a comment? I agree. I would fully yeah. support this. And Cody, I'm trying to, you're on mute again. I'm, oh, now we've lost video. I can't, it's still breaking up, Cody. I'm so sorry. Uh, I guess unless there are other comments I'll put in for the for the whole amount and and hope you know that we're able to do that. So everyone in line with that any other comments? That sounds good. Great. I'm so sorry Cody. I don't know what's happening today. Okay, so next um we have um, music dance study you hip hop chair dance for seniors. This um, is a dance program that will be on. I've got an echo again on or after Black History Month. Um, it would be at the Arbors and the Center for Extended Care. They are asking for six hundred dollars to serve one hundred folks. <clears throat> Uh, comments here were supporting materials um, that we hadn't received them. And another person said there it's a large ask and they're missing confirmation details again, I guess, because um, we've had applications from this group before. So the event is a hip hop chair dance for seniors. Um, it's about an hour long class. Elders do chair dance warm up and hip hop class that begins and ends in chairs travel through time uh, on the soul train and chair dance to clean cut hip hop and RB songs. They use creative props such as smiley faces, African maracas, and help make the soul train journey come to life. Um, the senior participants leave feeling more limber, all on board the hip hop soul train express. So uh, Matt, do you happen to know if we received any additional materials? I don't think we did. Uh, we, uh, we did. Actually, she sent me she sent me confirmation, and I told her to attach it to her application online, and I never heard back from her. But is, I'm, I'm sorry, is that for the prior grant year or from this grant year? She sent me the confirmation, and this is also oh, okay. I seem to have two. Let me shut that down. Um, she sent it's also for two programs and it's for the people in the, this rehab center to dance and have people there and i can go into what it's like to be in rehab and to have something like this come in can keep you going literally in every way but um she did send confirmation i and i never heard back from her when i said you know, attach it. And if there's a problem, let me know. So she does have confirmation for it. And she, she's done it several years in a row. So mm -hmm. um, she's very responsible. Okay. So, so we, we feel like it's solid that she, while we don't have, the confirmation did include a date or you don't have it. I'm a little confused. Um, I have to look for it, but yeah, no, it did. She had, confirmation of the whole thing too. Okay, so yeah, uh, Julian, fully I'm sorry funding? to interrupt. Yeah. Sorry to interrupt. Um, so Rhonda emailed me, excuse me one second. Rhonda emailed us, Julian, you as well, and said, um, firm could, <laughs> uh, it's kind of hard to follow this. She's, oh, she said, I mailed the community partnership agreements to your Amherst LCC office. Okay, so Robin, that's what you're saying. You got that from the library. Okay. Yes. Okay. okay. Yes. Thank you. And early on, and I said you need to attach it. Um, and then I never heard back from her. I said, "If there's problems, let me know." But she didn't. So, 
but she does have confirmation of it. Thank you. And it's two workshops. Okay, so it would be roughly 300 per workshop. It's pretty low. Okay, so do we support fully funding this if the funds are available? I do. Any, any other comments? I would support that. Any other comments? Moving on, we will try to do it. Okay, next we have music on main concerts. I've got that echo again. Um, I think, let's see if it stops, okay. Um, music on main concerts at First Church, together we sing a multicultural concert, May 7th, 2023. Uh, this is the First Congregational Church in Amherst. They are asking for $1,000 and expected to serve about 150 people. Um, collectively, we scored this at, at a 2.07, so solid. Uh, one person said it's a large ask, but a unique event and may need to adjust for music um, total. So this is a com combined concert between Michaela I hope I said that right, the Jewish Chorus of Western Mass and the First Church Choir of the First Congregational Church Amherst. Each group will sing several pieces then combine to sing several choruses from Elijah by Felix Mendelssohn uh, and a couple of other selections. The pieces will be in a variety of styles, uh, so sacred, secular, gospel, spiritual, Hebrew, and the combined chorus total of about 50 will be accompanied by piano. Following the concert, there will be a reception giving musicians and audience members uh, an opportunity to interact. Um, I am going to, while I ask if anybody wants to champion this, go to the budget um, because we are not able to provide funding for um, food. That'd be the one thing, but the, it's certainly not the whole budget that they're asking for. So is there someone who'd like to champion this? event. Yes, Robin. I'd like to champion it. I think it's important. Um, and yeah. it's here in Amherst. It's here in Amherst. It's multicultural. Multicultural, multi religion. We need to be less segmented. Um, I think more than 150 people will come. So I, I think it's pretty important, but is, I'm just looking at this food. Yeah, well, they're not asking us for the whole thing. So yeah, I like the, whatever the full budget or as much as we can do towards it. I agree. I'm, I like this multicultural and I, was glad it was the Jewish chorus and looks great overall. I think, yeah, as much as we can do. Okay. Uh, I, I'd like to support it in full. You know, we don't have a, uh, any conflict with the, the food afterwards. That's um, not included. I think they've included paper goods, but that's not food. So, uh, I am a little concerned about just um, it being such a large number, um, but it's here and it's in Amherst, and if we could, we would want to. Does anyone have any other comments? So I'll, I'll put down the full thousand and we'll hope that we can make that happen. Julian, I would only say a very high partial just to give ourselves a little bit of wiggle room because this is another choral. Uh, I mean, it's it's a concert, but it's another choral piece. And just just yeah. so we're because sometimes when we're when we're in the final voting meeting and we're running short on time, we sometimes we just say full fund, full fund, full fund. And we and I would want to just maybe hold a little bit of flexibility on this one because it's another choral piece. So does eight hundred feel about right, or is it more like a seven fifty? Oh, I yeah, it, I mean. Either one's fine. Nine hundred's fine. I just, I just want to give us a little bit of wiggle room in case we needed to balance the budget. 
let's let's put it to the 900 and and we'll have to to see all right any other comments next up so then we have uh Susanna Musprat this is a self-guided walking tour of stained glass in the town center um it would be starting in spring 2023 and following uh, she's asking for $2,700 and uh, plans to benefit 500 people. Um, overall, we scored this as um, a 2.64, so it was strong and supported. Um, the comments were, um, it's, a, it's a large ask and wondering um, if it if it could be more inclusive or maybe maybe there are accessibility issues with the walking tour i'm not sure uh, another person said great synergy with the cultural district project um someone else said something about potential model for accessibility and another person said the website should be accessible so okay let's go back and um this is developed as a self-guided walking tour of significant stained glass in Amherst Town Center. Um, stops include European 16th and century, 17th century glass um, in the, my eyes are given out here, Rother was room at the Mead Art Museum, uh, Windows and Grace Church, which are newly recognized as the work of the father of American stained glass, William Gibson from 1865 um, by Clayton, Bell and, Clayton and Bell in London and Tiffany Studios, Angel of Lilies at the Unitarian Meeting House, which are from the 1880s um, and a rel religious scenes by Franz Mayer Studios at St. Bridget's Church from 1925. Also, there's a contemporary window um, in the town hall that was created with uh, support of the Amherst Cultural Council from 2003. The tour will also highlight examples of med medieval rival architecture from 19th to 20th centuries in town center and a website with multiple images, videos, and information on fabrication. And the preservation will supplement a rack card mapping locations. Sorry, I think I mangled the description, but to sum, to sum up, I think it sounds like a fantastic resource uh, that would be ongoing for people coming, you know, to visit Amherst as a destination, along with folks that that live here, that connects us to, you know, stained glass as an art form. So it, it, my only reservation is it's a really large ask, but I think it's it's really important work. Is there anyone who'd like to champion this grant? Yes, Rachel. Yeah, I would I would um, like to fully fund it if we can, um, because it is it is actually creating something for the long term. Now you're hearing echo from me, aren't you? Yes. I only have one device on, so I don't know if it's a microphone or do you have two devices on? I need mean, two devices on. Maybe. If somebody has two devices on, it, that's where the Robin, people. I have the suspicion. Sorry to point a finger, but I think it's your device. I'm sorry. I'm gonna muting should do it. Um, yeah, so for the I think because it would it does it would create a long term resource um, that's available for locals as well as tourists, as you said. And I think um, the other I was gonna ask you if I know that we're evaluating um, applications based on their merit, but in something like this. Um, because it's very much focusing on what is here in the town of Amherst and the artworks and everything else, can we as a council, as part of the um, the grant, request that, that they not only um, consider accessibility measures, but also something that um, is a broader acknowledgement of this place as a whole, the history of this place, of, of, of where it's all located as a whole? So I don't know if that's something that do you see do you see what I'm saying? You Actually, don't I don't see what you're saying. As okay. as, so I think accessibility I, is maybe I think I need to read back through it, but I think we generally have to kind of take the grants as they come in without putting stipulations on 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 top. So okay. what are what are you trying to stipulate specifically? 
I was thinking in terms, I mean, the accessibility is definitely something that, you know, I think we will want to encourage if that's not already built in. Um, and um, the other thing I was, you know, to just put it very, very frankly, is I think the land acknowledgement issue. And I'm not saying that, you know, I'm not trying to make an issue with this, um, with this particular application, but I just think that that was something I thought would be appropriate for us to raise as a council or to consider as a council that it could be a criterion for, for other applications going forward. So um, the land acknowledgement. Well, because it's talking about Amherst, things that that are in Amherst, that are located in Amherst. Mm -hmm. And it feels like if you're going to talk about the history, maybe there needs to be a broader kind of context. So um, so, you know, other things are kind of performances and whatever else. So I think because this is so much related to the place um, and where things are located. So I'm not, so I'm saying that I'm, I, I'm not going to deny them full funding because they don't have it, but I just thought this is a, an opportunity to raise this question for us to consider for future guidelines. If that makes sense. For, fu for future yeah. guidelines. Yeah. Yes. That's something that we could okay. put in the guidelines, but as far right. as this particular grant application, yeah, I don't, we can't really. That's fine. That's right. fine. I still support funding it fully. Yeah. Um, I, I would support pulling it, funding it fully if we if we truly have have the funds. Yes, Robin. Um, I shut down my other device and I'm still hearing the noise, so I'm not sure what it is. Um, I think this is something Emma should have. I mean, I think this is, you know, this is Demers, and we have this great history of stained glass and all that it means. Um, um, but I also think this is probably half of what it's gonna cost to produce this, if not more. And she says, you know, an expert student researcher, but she doesn't say who or how many hours um, as a professional researcher. I don't think that's gonna be enough at all. Um, has she arranged with um, the bid to have the cards and the where she says she's going to have them, which I'm pretty sure she has because the bid is in support of this. Um, also, also time, I also don't see it happening within her time. I feel like this is like the first half development budget, and then there should be she needs another grant to actually put it forward. It feels to me like it's half of what's going to be needed to produce. Yeah. Sorry to interrupt. And I, I don't have these to look at, but it did mention that 10 pages of supplemental materials would be emailed to the cultural council. Um, because I can't get that stuff open. So, so that's something I think we need. I think it, it might be like a lot of, there was a lot of people would be donating their services and time too. Yeah. That, and that's why the cost is what it is. I mean, as reported. Sorry, and we're running out of time on this one, but I spoke for maybe too long. Yeah. I mean, I think this is something Amherst should have. Yeah, well, yeah. We'll have to do I'd like to yeah, Julian, I can just speak to uh, the supplemental materials and the agreement with the bid and the cultural district. Um, I, I happen to know the cultural district has committed the funds to putting this together. So I really do think this is a high feasibility, I mean, you know, we could always ask any of our projects if they're actually going to be able to, to come across. But I, I do think this one has a lot of feasibility, a lot of good partnerships and some really brilliant um, voices engaged with it. So I support, you know, your your position of as close to full as possible. I, again, I would um, caution us to just maybe say like, a you know, very high partial because it is a large ask and, you know, we'll see where we're at. Um, but I think it's a fabulous project. I think based on what you're saying, there'd be a lot of push from the community behind it to make this happen. So, okay. and since we're at time, uh, I've put in a number for a high partial and we'll move on. Exciting, I'm looking forward to it. Uh, the next one is the Native Plant Trust. This is Plant Communities of Massachusetts. There, um, something is wrong with my, <laughs> Uh, spreadsheet because I don't have the date correctly. I'll have to look at that. It would be at the Jones Library and they're asking for $700 for it. 
Um, this one we scored collectively at a 1.2. So there were some questions about supporting it. Um, someone asked you, I don't know if everyone's muted. I've got that echo again. Um, is everyone muted? So questions were, do plant lectures fall within our mission? Another person said it's a single talk, uh, no local partners. Someone said it's really cool, but it's not arts focused enough. And someone else said science, um, we don't have that many science um, applications. It's not a huge ask and it's in Amherst. And somebody else just said the word science. So um, before getting into this, um, actually, yeah, it's, uh, things that are science and nature related, you know, uh, can, can be, um, certainly can be considered. And we don't have a lot of applications like that. Uh, so this is the Native Plant Trust. It's the nation's first and only plant conservation organization. And they're focused solely on New England's native plants. And they propose to offer plant conservation lectures at the Jones Library. Um, it would provide an overview of the extraordinary diversity of native plant communities in the state with examples of the plants and environmental features. The goal is to raise awareness and appreciation of the area's habitats, educate about plant communities, um, current status, and encourage ways to conserve local natural resources. This program was piloted in 2019 with five towns throughout the state and has continued to run across Massachusetts through 2022. The program in Amherst will be part of a larger statewide initiative called the Plant Conservation Lecture series so as far as again questioning about science i'd go back to you know we had a delightful conversation about a group in hadley that wants to promote composting you know uh promoting knowing what your native species are and using them you know um i don't know if i would support you know champion fully funding this but i, I would champion this as as something that's mean of meaningful and part of the larger state project i think it's it's important and it's a different kind of uh, program uh, so it adds something different for the community other comments yes well a uh, hundred of the 700 is for travel so what they're really asking us for is 600. True. Thank you for checking that. Yes, we can't do travel. Um, I, I fully support this. And science is definitely part of culture. And um, we don't have a lot of science. I guess as a science geek, I really support science. But um, I think it hits most everything we want and can tie in with every a lot of other things we are supporting. Is there anyone who's put a comment about plant lectures that wants to comment about what they were thinking about as a counterpoint? I I really agree with the the science component too. I think that should you know we should promote that. And you know, um, Robin, you have the application open there, right there. Um, I I just I think I had a reservation about this because I wasn't sure if they had any local partners or they're just going to go to jo Jones Library and use it as a venue. Um, so, so that's, um, I don't know if that makes a difference to us in terms of grant granting the money, if we're just going to fund a lecture that's going to take place at Amherst, in which case it benefits our community. Um, but I just wasn't sure whether there, um, was like kind of a intentional effort to work with local partners since we're talking about native plants, you know, so what, what are here, like I've been working with, so that's, that was just a, a no ad put on. I don't have the application. Yeah. I've got the application open and they have applied to many other cultural councils, but it's a little bit difficult reading that to understand specifically. I think they're, it's a larger thing, right? So I, I don't quite understand the, the full scope, you know, you know, are they applying to those councils for what they're doing here? or how they're separating that out. But, I, I took it as they were applying to different councils, like something Matt said earlier, like, okay, if they can get the money from this council, they'll go do a talk there. And if they get it from, you know, they, that, that was the impression I got. But I think my reservation came from whether or not they had um, kind of um, 
solicited local partners in, in you know in the respective communities and that that was what gave me a little bit of pause but in in, in theory I, don't think so. I, I think this is a great thing to support yeah my reading of it was in this case was actually quite quite the opposite that it wasn't just asking all the, the different councils but it seems like i would need need a map right of here are these councils and i'm do you know i'm doing the native species in this region of the commonwealth and they're all included in that area of the map versus you know you get out to cape cod and the councils they're applying to over there i don't know if there is one from cape cod but um yeah there's stuff all, all over but i i think they're doing multiple regions um and handling them separately for the native species so um to your point you know does do we have support from the jones library i don't know um and did, we, did it have a date Let me look back they do no this was the one where the date was 20 in mind um 2023 john's library um rachel i had some of the same questions of what this really is and i can't get the additional information open and i guess the a, a, a fact against maybe funding it fully is the um Sorry, it's it's one talk for thirty people, so that's the based on the numbers. Sorry, say that that it's one. Pod said, well, it's it's just a single talk, and it's um, they're expected to reach thirty people based on what they put in their application. So that was something I put as you know questionable in terms of funding it fully. Yeah, I'm coming a little bit full circle that if they don't have a date and a, and a letter of commitment from the Jones Library, then it potentially doesn't meet our guidelines. Um, so but, you know, they, I'd like to be able to support it. They do have additional material. I just can't get it open on my iPad, but you probably could. I have it open and it's, it's like, um, a tax uh it's a form 990 uh, with taxes i'm not sure why that's attached probably to show that it's a real organization uh we're, we're at time yeah thank you okay well it seems like we have a lot of questions on that one okay <clears throat> uh we're gonna see how many more of these we can get done and then in um for the last 10 minutes um we want to uh since we have a pretty full house here tonight, talk about um, some of the opportunities we had um, with the cultural district. So next one, uh, Northampton Center for the Arts. Uh, this is for their 2023 Youth Performance Festival, uh, which is occurring from December this year through February of 2023. It's at the Northampton Center for the Arts um, and the community music school of springfield and they are asking for one thousand dollars to serve 250 people we scored this at a 2.3 um so there were no particular comments it's a youth performance it's in its fourth year um and it's a free opportunity for youth artists 8 to 18 to create original performance pieces under the guidance of mentor artists um, in the fields of music, dance, theater, poetry, spoken word, and video. Um, it's a center for creative agency of young artists and is committed to supporting them as they discover their own creative processes. Over six weekends, December through February, the young artists work in small co cohorts uh, with two mentor artists in their respective fields and receive guidance and coaching to explore their fullest artistic potential uh, it culminates in a live performance for the greater community that occurs February 11th and 12th at the Northampton Center for the Arts um, and at one, one there and then one at the Community Music School of Springfield. Uh, we did not have any comments uh, on this one, so I will leave this to us. Is there anyone who would like to champion this grant? 
for the kids anyone um i like i like the mentor artist component of it i don't know that i i feel like maybe it's just them using the word mentor stuck out to me but i liked that i love that too um yeah and and when you look at the the ages of the artists you know that it's eight to 18 um you know it's 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 a really rich age it's it's not like this is for four-year-olds these these are people who are in their own right are are creative and on a journey and that mentorship can last them a lifetime to make a real difference and it's art that people are participating in so any other comments i think it's also great to just encourage a new generation i think those are goals that like as the council like that's an investment in, like the future of grantees so i think i think it's great even though it's in northampton it'll probably reach um artists here sorry i'm hearing the echo now that i'm talking but um yeah i think it's great and i think it'll have i think this specifically will be able to have a really big impact even though it might be farther away yeah I'd love to fully fund it, and I I do think it's it's got a regional draw when you have mentors like that coming in, and it reaches Northampton and Springfield also. So, uh, you know, if we have to hedge our bets, I could put it in at eight fifty instead of a thousand because it is a big ask. Is everyone good with that number tentatively? Any okay, additional comments? Anyone? All right, moving on to the next. Okay. Um, the next is George Owens for the Northampton Flute Trio Concert. The date uh, is to be determined, um, location to be determined. They prefer the Bangs, but uh, Jones Library or Amherst Historical might be possible. He's asking for $450, expects about 75 people. Um, our comments around this uh, were no date, no venue and they only applied to, to us. And um, collectively, we scored this at a 1.2. Um, so uh, what, what is this? It is a, a flute trio performing an hour long concert <clears throat> uh, featuring composers from Bach to Contemporary. And um, I'm, I'm going to just move to since we're limited with time is I, I don't believe it meets our guidelines without a date or a location so while it would be lovely uh, especially with the direct granting is is there anyone else who uh feels this does meet our our uh, guidelines i agree with what you just said julianne so I, I also agree it doesn't meet the guidelines. Okay, so if we are all in agreement and there are no other comments, I will move on. Thank you. <clears throat> um, the next is Paperback Magazine's celebratory launch, March 25th, 2023. And it would be at the Great Room and the Old Chapel at UMass. They're asking for $2,000 and expect 75 people to attend. Um, paperback magazine hosting a, a reading presentation of poetry, prose, and visual art in celebration of the publication's fourth issue. It's an interdisciplinary literary magazine with an ecological focus. They offer this annual public event in an effort to enhance community on campus and beyond and to eliminate the confluence of art sci and science to advance awareness of the ecological crisis and uh, to precipitate positive change. Um, it's published annually, both in print and digital form, and it is created and curated by students, staff, and faculty of UMass. And the celebratory launch of issue three in the spring of last year presented indigenous poet, Santi Fraser, um, visual artist, Ashley Eliza Williams, activist, Emily Dropkin, among others. And this year, the poet and performance of artists uh, CAC Conrad um, will read alongside prose writer and visual artists that are yet to be determined. So comments here were um, 
It's a magazine launch event, so it lacks public benefit. Uh, another person said, uh, not sure this is uh, community focused enough at, at, at UMass, but the content's great. And another person said we should support this, but should not be the only or primary supporter. So um, with that, is there anyone who would like to champion this, this grant? It, it is unique content and, you know, certainly with the literary and combined with the science, it's interesting. Yeah, I, I think, sorry, I mean, this is not a full championing, but um, I was initially kind of like, yeah, that it was a magazine launch threw me off or put me off of it a little bit because I was kind of like, we're not supporting like the creation or the production of it or whatever, but I, I do think it's nice especially that they're talking about like speakers that have come in the past, like um, that element of like coming together in a literary and cultural way is cool to me. Um, but I don't know if I'm in full support of it. Yeah, just to go over the budget too. So this the stipend is $1,000 for CA Conrad 500 for a prose writer who's not named, 500 for a visual artist who's not determined. Um, and then their technical costs for 300, 300 for flyers and 300 for, or 500 for advertising. So I think I think the, the budget is a, is a little bit um, un, unrealistic and, and perhaps high and I'm, I'd like to support it, but I'm I'm really concerned, you know, will the community go there and participate or will it mainly benefit, you know, students and faculty? Uh, I mean, it is, I guess, open to the public, at, at, at least we can say that, but um, I, I would support it. I, I think if we can get around it being a, a magazine launch, because I, I think the cultural content's there, but I think it's a much smaller number. Anyone else would like to comment? Yep. Is it going to be like any past the initial launch date? Is there going to be like an existing exhibit or is this a one? Yeah, well, the magazine is both printed and online. So it, it is ongoing there, but you know, the, the Mm -hmm. The red flags I see is that uh, $2,000 of this, this grant would go to three people and two of them aren't known. Are undecided, yeah. Yeah, and I, I, think, yeah. I think 500 in advertising is really high, especially when that doesn't include another 300 for flyers and printing and posting costs. So um, it, it, I think it's really hard to consider the, the community benefit giving these given these really high numbers and and not knowing who two of the um stipend recipients are yes yeah especially with the direct granting model feels problematic it really does yeah yes robin well the budget's also kind of off because they said they're going to be getting two thousand um in projected income and the budget's 3100 and they're asking us for 2000 so they're actually asking us for more because mm -hmm. there's 1100 left in the budget that they need to fill in and they're asking us for 2000 so that's also a little strange. okay how are we for time rachel uh we have a minute and 20 seconds for this one I, is everyone comfortable with really lowballing this because of the ambiguity or perhaps going to i'm just gonna you know go, go to 500 just to see what people say is 500 too much i think I would, so i would go even ahead, eleanor sorry rachel i would go even lower <laughs> okay what would you go with eleanor uh, 250. I could live with 250. Is there anyone who cannot live with 250 as a show of support? You cannot live with 250. So, okay, Rachel, do you feel it just simply does not meet our guidelines? That's my personal opinion. So I'm just going to put that okay. down there on the, so, for the record. 
let's be sure that we come back to this one. Okay. Um, with that, I'd like to turn it over to Matt, I believe, or your camera's on. I think you're ready to go. <laughs> I am. I'll do my best here. As you guys know, I'm juggling um, some small ones. Am I so timing I you to take too, a... Matt? Sorry, I don't I'm not know. timing you. Okay, good. <laughs> Time me if you want to. Feel free. Um, so since we're pretty close to a full full quorum or the full council here tonight, um, I wanted to just reopen the conversation around the um, spring block party. Uh, as you all know, Eleanor um, was the lead on putting together an application for us for a totally separate $2,500, um, oh my gosh, uh, festivals and um, projects application to support this spring block party that the bid and the cultural district are also putting money into. Um, and so that was something that we decided about two months ago at an ACC meeting that we would apply for this and apply those funds into this. Um, the spring block party, I guess the, the main highlights I would say around it, um, call for participants in December and January. And so that would be timed with our, whether or not we put any more money into it, that would be timed with our grant, um, grant award letters that we send out to the grantees, um, as well as the bid and the cultural district would also put out their own calls for um, people who are interested in participating in the in the spring block party uh, where the fall block party shuts down um, Pleasant Street, this would be more focused towards Amity Street and Main Street, um, but a very similar model where we just try to literally get people in the streets of Amherst, um, you know, put up one main stage and potentially some smaller stages, depending on how things um, shape up a lot of collaboration with the local business community. Um, you know, the good thing is the bid has done this already. So they really do know sort of the logistics of make it happen. And everybody who went last year knows that the, the streets are just packed and you don't see that in Amherst very often. So it's a pretty exciting event. Um, this one would be similar to the fall, except rather than sort of being local business featured, although we would still feature local business, this would really very much um, feature arts and the arts and culture community in town, which I think is rich and, and really ripe to get out there and sort of be together in person again after a long hiatus. Um, and so the ultimate, uh, the, the projected budget, and I can, I can send this application um, that, uh, that, we, that Eleanor and I put together, I can send this out to everybody afterwards, but um, the, the projected budget by the bid is around 25,000 for um, a full, Kind of what they spent on the fall block party um, and so that's kind of what we project here um, another nice thing about it julianne and i were, were talking about this the other day is that this is a time when you know as we announce our every year we put out a press release and kind of announce our grantees and sometimes it gets picked up oftentimes it doesn't um, but we've already kind of talked a little bit about trying to partner up our press release with you know a notice about this spring block party so we can really i think you know um, Julie, uh, Leah and others who put on the showcase videos really talked about how special it was to connect personally with our artists and our grantees. Um, and I think this is almost kind of the next step in that process, which is, you know, to literally get together and um, it would be an invitation based uh, participation in it. So all of our grantees would be asked if they're interested in participating, um, but then there would be a steering committee made up of members of the cultural council and the bid and the cultural district who sort of finalize what the what the um, what the show uh, the lineup looked like? Um, so of that twenty five thousand, you know, I think if we could, we we have about um, about ten thousand, a little over ten thousand that we could at twenty percent reserve for um, local projects. Um, so I would propose that we talk about you know what's realistic for us to put for put for this project. Um, and you know what, what we can what we can do with it. Um, the last thing I want to say, and then I'll kind of open it up or turn it over to Eleanor. Might want to um, also address some of this stuff. Is is that we you know we are we have a lot of money coming back to us this year that was unexpended in the past year or two years. Um, and so even if we um, oh geez I don't have the bottom line number in front of me right now. I'm sorry. Um, you know even if we did commit. 75 or the full 10,000, we would still be distributing well over our annual um, allotment to our grantees. So in other words, our annual allotment from the state was about 53,000. 
Um, and I think we have something like Robin 67,000. Does that sound right to distribute? I think just in the interest of time, we don't get too too far yeah, yeah. To really nailing down the numbers right now. Yeah. But and did did you mention Matt how much this you know creates an opportunity for you know our grantees to to have more connection and performance and you know contact with the public? It it, it show, I think you said that showcases them. I think that's the most exciting thing about it for me is is to actually you know sort of bring our grantees together as a group. Okay. Yes, Robin. So, do we know if we got the twenty five hundred dollar grant or not? Okay. So, but let's say we did. So that's another seventy five hundred if the ten thousand that was mentioned in the paper, um, and you just said that we're giving from the budget we now have. So before we get too far into the numbers, I'm so sorry to interrupt, Robin, but I, Robin, um, sorry, Eleanor has been working on this and I'd, I'd really like to, to hear her, her perspective before we start start crunching about what, what this means. And she might have some numbers too, I don't know, if that's okay, and then we'll come back to how it adds up. Well, I feel like um, Matt hit most of the points here. I just feel like, uh, like you guys were saying, I'm just so pro um, how important I think this will be in terms of community and community of local artists. Um, and I feel like that's something we look at uh, a lot with like, you know, for grants, like if people are applying and like how it builds community and brings people together. And I just think this is such an amazing opportunity to do that. Um, and I, like, I think the fall block party is super awesome and amazing. Um, but I just think it would be so incredible to have such an arts focused thing um, to be so interactive in that way. Um, I know that uh, someone had suggested like that mural component. I don't know, I just, I really think it would be amazing um, and really impactful. Yeah, my, my only logistical thing that I have been thinking about is that if it's not too late or possible, I would be pro moving it maybe like a week earlier um, than the May 19th or something, but we can also just like talk about that later. I had just thought in terms of like, you know, we had wanted to make it before students left. Um, and I was thinking the 19th might be pushing the later side. Yeah, I mean, timing wise, conceptually, we don't really have community events going on in spring that way. So it's really nice to bring that forward. And yes, we want the full community and students, and I don't know how much control we have over the date, but we also want good weather and True. you know you move it to april and it could be snowing yeah exactly. I've, I've seen snow on mother's day you know so oh. um you know we have to hope for, for the best but and i i love i think the fall block party is really family and kind of school age focused more so whereas whereas this i think eventually it might even become a destination for more so that is not just a local community that brings people in and supports businesses um, with people coming from outside as well as locals. We have hands up and are you okay keep holding Robin before we crunch numbers so that we can hear from, from Leah and Rachel? Say that again? We'll, we'll hold the number crunching and, and I'll move to Leah and Rachel come back to you. Leah? Um, I was gonna say I was driving through Northampton this weekend and I was seeing all of the like buzz about first night and it was really making me think about that I think it's and I saw it was sponsored by Northampton Arts Council and I think it's having something that's like I think part of the reason first night is becoming so successful is it's like um, for people who don't know it's Northampton puts on I think it's um I don't think it's I think it's like the last day of December but Here's it's like you. kind of family oriented so it's not real I don't think it's like starts at 1 a.m I think it starts at like 7 um but it's like the first night of the new year and they do like a bunch of performances and business things and it's sponsored by the arts council and I think having something like every spring that's like a thing and building that momentum over years like I think having this be a recurring event would be really great and also I know the Northampton Arts Council gets a lot of donations I'm wondering if this would be an opportunity for us to have like a donation table 
and then also just like reiterating having connections with artists I know we met with the diversity equity inclusion um I forget their title but they talked a lot about like outreach into the community and going to events and talking with artists and talking with people and that's how you start to increase diversity it's like these it's just like so many conversations and so I think having this and getting to have those conversations and talking with people would be great for like networking in a way that I think just builds our community a lot. Thank you. Those are all great points. Rachel, do you still have your hand up or did I Leah cover it all? <laughs> I was actually just texting Robin to say, please let everybody know I have a meeting right now I need to go to, so I'm sorry, but um, to leave. But thank you very much, Eleanor, for lunch, for like um, filing this application for us. I'm sure that took a lot of your time. And, oh, and well, I was, I would just like to say thank you to Matt to really, really <laughs> held my hand and much. helped me basically through the entire thing. So, but thank you, Rachel. I appreciate it. I, so I think I just wanted to, I don't know when we need to make a decision on this, but I think, you know, in principle, it's a great idea, but I think a, attached to that, I would, I would ask us to consider as a council taking some of the, um, the, the, the percentage, 20% or whatever it is that we have, um, that we can, or we may allocate to local activities, taking some of that to um, put towards uh, activities or initiatives that could um, have a more longer term impact in the, in the in the sense of like um, having more regular occurrences or events that we with local partners and and not put it all into this one thing on the the, the one day. Okay, so that's so I I I, I support that, but I just um, I wanted to just raise the um, possibility of or the or the proposal of setting aside some of that 20% towards um, activities that we could do um, over the course of the year with with partners, not that we would have to do it ourselves necessarily, mm -hmm. but we would facilitate um, to, um, with the same objective of what you're trying to do by supporting the um, the spring festival. So I'm really sorry, but I really have to go because I have to go on an international call. So thank you. Thank nice you. To see you all. Thanks Bye. And and I'm going to respond to Rachel while she can't hear it. Sorry, Rachel, while you're going. Okay. But, um, you know, we certainly have discussed I and mean, like we tried to do Pecha Kucha, Pecha Kucha and like that is not the only thing that could happen during the year on a more regular basis. However, I will say that it's make comes up awfully fast. And as far as us executing on launching any kind of larger recurring ongoing event, we have to kind of swing at the pitch of what we have here because, um, you know, from, from my experience to right now say, okay, no, we're going to hold a portion of this back because we think we want to do something like this, the ability to execute from here in December, um, without really being organized with it now is, is, is pretty challenging. So, um, I, I take that as something to think of more for, for future years. Um, and, and that I would support, you know, conceptually trying to put, um, the full amount behind this and just kind of blocking it out in the budget now as we go, and then seeing if for some reason, that's not something that, that we can do, um, once we get, uh, closer to, to finalizing it. And, and as I think when I just talked with you, Matt, you were saying that we don't have the answer on the grant that you to the festival grant you applied for, but it is quite, quite, quite likely, you know, that we're in good shape as a cultural council applying for it for a local festival that, you know, we're kind of their ideal candidate and that we should, you know, wait and see, but, but, you know, be optimistic there. Is that correct? Yeah, that's right. We, um, we were talking to the cultural district or MCC about a totally unrelated um, topic. And I asked them and they really kind of laughed. I mean, I think it's, it, it is sort of an, an entitlement grant to communities. Um, so, so MCC is strongly behind, um, you know, behind us as a, as a applicant mm -hmm. for this, I think. Um, so I did pull up the numbers. I know we don't want to crunch the numbers too tightly, but just so everybody knows um, we got, you know, we receive our money from the state lottery every year. So we were um, awarded 53, eight, from the state um, that for this year. And based on money that was um, returned or rolled over from previous years, 
we're actually at 71,083 for the amount available. So, you know, if we, if we took 7,500 out, so we, we could take up to 20% of that 53,800. So we could take up to, um, that's like 10,700. Um, if we took 7,500 off of what we have to grant, we would still, you know, have um, 63,000 and change to grant. So that's, that's 10,000 more than the state allotment um, was. And I realize I just shared those numbers very quickly. You can, you can all see them in the Smart Simple platform. But I think my main point is just, you, you know, we, we, would, we would, it's true that these are funds that we would not be distributing directly to grantees, directly cash in hand. But I do think that you know we would still be um, distributing well above our annual allotment, and and that these funds would have a you know a really meaningful and, and manifest benefit to all the grantees who participated in in the block party. Yeah, I'd I'd like to add to that that these are funds that came back to us because grantees were not able to make use of them, and I think it's you know perhaps very equalizing, just fair to distribute them back to the entire community of, you know, both for the benefit of being at the event, but also to have it as a, as a venue um, to reach people, as opposed to pushing it to one person or, or another, you know, we, we can do it in a meaningful way to spread it across the community. And I, I think it's a great use of the funds. So are there any other, uh, Cody, you've got your hand up. Yes. I have to go. Thank you for being here. And I hope we can get your, your audio internet stuff worked out. Thank you. Yeah, we will. Okay. Uh, any, anyone else? Any comments by Cody? Okay. With that, we'll wrap this up and see you. I just looked at this early. Is it Wednesday? Um, Wednesday. Yep. See you at the next meeting. All right. Thank you well, all. Can I, ask, can I ask a quick question? Yeah. Um, I know we talked about, because I wasn't, sometimes I forget the rules are like what you can email about and what you can't. I was wondering, I know, I think last meeting, I was thinking about, um, maybe writing to the MCC about including accessibility in their um, grant questions for next year. Yeah. What would the next step for that be? Like, would we create a subcommittee or um, do like what we vote on this or how would we move forward if that was something we wanted to do? I mean, on, on a really basic level, I don't think there's anything that prohibits you as a Amherst Cultural Council member for writing to the MCC and saying, hey, have you guys considered this? You know, right. so not, I just nobody has to vote or endorse or anything else for you to communicate up. Okay, because I didn't want um, to do that, like if we had to like, vote on that or something. But I think it would be something very beneficial and passionate about it. Matt, you're muted. Ah, oh, such a rookie mistake. I really appreciate that. Um, if you would like, just, you know, in terms of having a unified front to copy me and, and Julianne, that, you know, that's usually a good sort of rule of thumb. The other person that I would, see somebody, I'm sorry, I've got an echo, is that, um, uh, the other person that I might copy when you write to um, Jay Wong, uh, Jay Wong is our rep, you, you know that, she's, and she's been fabulous. Um, is Charles. You know, I, would, I would just directly include Charles and just say, hey, you know, Charles can speak to the efforts we've made and has been a great partner for us and, you know, kind of hype up his involvement because I think that's the kind of idea, you know, they, they're all about good ideas and, and I think he could really help you champion that uh, at their level. Um, Thank I you so much. I, I agree, Leah. I think the bar for accessibility is really low. And we need to raise it. Excellent. And on the MCC level. So I thought that too. And yeah, Charles would probably be a really good person. Just even call him. You know, he says it's steps. So, you know, he knows that. And, you know, he's he's great. And he has good ideas and all of that. But um, 
I agree with you. So, and yeah. thank you for wanting to do, you know. I think it's really powerful coming from Leia as, as a high school student calling it out for the entire Commonwealth. I think it's fantastic. So yeah, appreciate it. And we're, we're here to help you with that. Don't feel like you're alone, but also just want to be clear that, you know, we're all, all free to, uh, to, to communicate up. So great idea. With that, are we, we are done. We can conclude. I will stop the recording. Very good. Great session tonight, everyone. Thank you. Hi. Thanks, everybody. Bye.